In this video, I will introduce you to five animals that you can find in Southeast Asia coming up right after this. Hi guys, my name is Eddie. I'm a biologist and a naturalist and I like to teach you about the natural world. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. Now Southeast Asia is an amazing place to go for many different reasons. I've actually done some traveling in Southeast Asia myself and it is a great place to find and photograph wildlife. So if you're interested in learning about some of the best places to find wildlife in Southeast Asia, I actually created a video that goes through my top five destinations. The card is at the top of the screen and it gives you a pretty good in-depth explanation of those places, so be sure to check that out. But in this video, I'm just gonna introduce you to five animals that are relatively easy to see that you should look out for. So hopefully in this video, you'll learn some cool science about these animals. Hopefully I can inspire you to travel to Southeast Asia. All right, so let's get into it. The first animal that you should look for is a hornbill. And hornbills are large, beautiful birds characterized by a long down curved bill. The two species that I saw when I was in Southeast Asia were the great hornbill and the oriental pied hornbill. All hornbills are monogamous and they mate for life. And that is why in some places in Southeast Asia, there's this myth that says that if you see a hornbill, you're supposed to meet your lifelong true love pretty soon. And they are omnivores, but they mostly eat fruit. And I think one amazing thing is that some scientists have found that Hornbills can be keystone species of tropical forests, and that is because they are crucial for seed dispersion throughout forests. Hornbills are essentially responsible for spatial distributions and the survival of many species of trees in tropical forests in Southeast Asia. And that is part of the reason why we need to save these guys, many of which are of conservation concern. Okay, the next animals that you should look out for are macaque monkeys. Macaques are a genus of monkeys that are very common throughout Southeast Asia. They are primarily fruit eaters. Not only are they adorable, but they are also very adaptable. And in many situations, they're really comfortable around humans. They have very complex social groups that are divided into different levels of dominance, and they exhibit some of the highest levels of Machiavellian intelligence out of any animal. By the way, post in the comments if you think I pronounced that right. Machiavellian? I think that's how you pronounce it. Which is the capacity of an entity to be in a successful political engagement. So, for example, mid-level males within a group will form alliances with higher level males to bully lower ranked males in order to increase their own status. Sadly, this kind of sounds a lot like humans, right? But it might be part of the reason why humans evolved to be so intelligent. So the next animal that you have to find when going to Southeast Asia is a gibbon. So gibbons are these omnivorous apes. They're considered lesser apes. And they live in the trees and you will see them swinging from branch to branch, which is known as brachiation. And gibbons will generally mate for life, and if you don't see them, you will probably hear their beautiful songs, which echo throughout the forest for long distances, which scientists believe have evolved as a result of sexual selection pressure because they are monogamous. But scientists have also discovered that gibbons sing in order to warn each other if predators are near as well. They are just so adorable. Khao Yai National Park in Thailand is an amazing place to see them. So our next animal is a monitor lizard. And these are huge, gorgeous, carnivorous lizards. There are several species of monitor lizards that you can find in Southeast Asia. The water monitor is the species that I saw in Thailand. This animal might make you think of a dinosaur or Godzilla, but more reasonably, you'll think of a Komodo dragon. And they are actually cousins with Komodo dragons. They are great swimmers and are solitary. Interestingly, they will climb trees to avoid predators and they do have venom. And though the ecological role of their venom is debated among scientists, it is currently being researched in order to find treatments for blood clots in humans. Our last animals are the columbine monkeys, which are just these gorgeous monkeys that have long tails, long limbs, and beautiful colorings. They eat primarily leaves which are harder to digest, and thus they have evolved larger stomachs to aid in the fermentation of leaves in their stomach. And the endangered red-shanked langur 
which I saw in Vietnam, has evolved an extra enzyme to aid in digestion as well. And the gene that codes for this enzyme is what you call a duplicated gene. One way that organisms accumulate new genes that ultimately benefit them in natural selection is by erroneously duplicating them and then later on they can mutate to serve a new beneficial function. Well, a specific case of this was not well understood until a study was done on red shanked langurs by scientists at the University of Michigan. That was all I had for today. Thank you guys for watching. I just wanna conclude by saying I know that the majority of my viewers uh, on this channel are actually not from Southeast Asia, and they're probably from places that are really long and expensive plane ride away. But I will say that Southeast Asia is a remarkably cheap place to travel. And I made another video, I'll put the card right here on how to do wildlife tourism on a budget. So be sure to check out that video as well. Anyways guys, again, thank you. I'm coming out with a lot more videos on bird watching, wildlife photography, ecotourism travel, as well as educating you guys about science and conservation. So again, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Remember that exploring nature is always an adventure. Peace out.